Welcome if you're just joining us. We're listening to some uh, lovely music played by Eric Choate in the background while we await our noonday prayer service. <clears throat> Forgive me for stopping the song uh, mid-play, but if we let it play to the end, we would be at almost 12.15. Welcome to our St. Mary's noonday service via the cloud. Uh, delightful that you are here today uh, and that we can gather together in prayer this Wednesday of Holy Week uh, before our official Triduum celebration starts tomorrow night. Please grab your Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Again, this is the definitive source of Episcopal worship. Uh, they are in the pews at church. If you've never seen one before, they are a fantastic resource. Uh, the, the service is available online if you do not have a copy of yours at home. Again, mine was given to me when I was confirmed Episcopalian uh, 23 years ago at a summer camp I worked at. Uh, and so it's lovely to be able to use it today. Please join me for prayer on page 103 of your Book of Common Prayer. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Please join me in saying Psalm 126 together on page 105 of your Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 126, page 105. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For our scripture today, <clears throat> I'm going to read the Old Testament lesson from our daily lectionary for this Wednesday of Holy Week. It's a little bit longer, so enjoy. This is from the Hebrew Scriptures book Lamentations, chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. How the Lord in his anger has humiliated daughter Zion. He has thrown down from heaven to earth the splendor of Israel. He has not remembered his footstool on the day of his anger. The Lord has destroyed without mercy all the dwellings of Jacob. In his wrath he has broken down the strongholds of daughter Judah. He has brought down to the ground in dishonor the kingdom and its rulers. He has cut down in fierce anger all the might of Israel. He has withdrawn his right hand from them in the face of the enemy. He has burned like a flaming fire in Jacob, consuming all around. He has bent his bow like an enemy, with his right hand set like a foe. He has killed all in whom we took pride in the tent of daughter Zion. He has poured out his fury like fire. The Lord has become like an enemy. He has destroyed Israel. He has destroyed all its palaces, laid in ruins its strongholds, and multiplied in a daughter Judah mourning and lamentation. He has broken down his booth like a garden. He has destroyed his tabernacle. The Lord has abolished in Zion festival and Sabbath, and in his fierce indignation has spurned king and priest. The Lord has scorned his altar, disowned his sanctuary. He has delivered into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. A clamor was raised in the house of the Lord as on a day of festival. The Lord determined to lay in ruins the wall of daughter Zion. He stretched the line. He did not withhold his hand from destroying. He caused rampart and wall to lament. They languished together. <clears throat> her gates have sunk into the ground. He has ruined and broken her bars. Her king and princes are among the nations. Guidance is no more, and her prophets obtain no vision from the Lord. I wanted to share that with you today in case you are unfamiliar with uh, the Book of Lamentations in the Hebrew Scriptures. Lamentations is, is what it is. It is, as it said, it is a, a series of laments, of woes, of deep sadness and sorrow by the Hebrew people. And it was written at a time uh, when the Hebrew nation had been conquered by the Babylonians and they had been taken off into exile. Jerusalem had been utterly destroyed and God's people had seen God's very home on earth, the temple, raised to the ground, and they were taken away as slaves. Now the interesting thing about <clears throat> the book of Lamentations is, God does not speak once in the book of Lamentations. It is 
five overarching poems or laments from the Hebrew people about their sadness and their confusion and their sorrow, that their understanding of God's home had been destroyed, and that their understanding of God's people, uh, the chosen people of God, they are now slaves and homeless. Um, to lament is a powerful act of faith. And it's something we don't talk about enough in our world of, of execution and accomplishment. Uh, if we often talk about failure, it's only to talk about how it then led us on to success. We don't actually, as the scriptures, uh, both the Book of Lamentations and a lot of the Psalms, is allow ourselves to simply grieve, to mourn the loss, because to lose, to fail, sorrow is simply a part of being human. It's a part of the very word of God. And so my invitation to you in this season, and in all seasons, is that when you feel and find yourself in sorrow, in pain, that that's not outside of God's love and grace. Indeed, the word of God contains such sorrow even when, as in the Book of Lamentations, God doesn't speak. And so I think that a lot of us right now are in a sense of mourning and loss, of losing the opportunity to be with friends and loved ones at birthdays, uh, in weddings, uh, events being postponed indefinitely, not being able to gather together, uh, and this extended season of sheltering in place really making us question how much longer can we take it. Rather than giving an answer, let us just simply take that sorrow, that confusion, to God. It is indeed godly. And although we cannot see it now, this is not the end. So what I, what I wonder is, what will we discover when we stop relying on ourselves and our own fortitude to get us through this and just sit in it and give it to God? Please join me on page 106 for the continuation of Noonday Prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty Savior, who at noonday called your servant St. Paul to be an apostle to the Gentiles. We pray you to illumine the world with the radiance of your glory, that all nations may come and worship you, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Savior, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved, for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. I now invite your prayers of need and concern, silently or aloud. We pray for all of those who are suffering from the coronavirus, from it directly and from the circumstances economically that force many of us to work from home or not work at all. We pray that this world, in this trauma and confusion, can feel and know your grace. We pray for all who walk faithfully through this Holy Week and through these next few days, that we may know your presence, experience your grace, and be ever deepened and transformed into your agents of that grace to the world. We thank you for technologies that keep us connected even if we are physically apart. Now let us conclude our service. Let us bless the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining us for Noonday Prayer. Just some quick heads up and highlights. Uh, yes, we are celebrating the great Triduum uh, virtually and at home. Uh, there is a wonderful resource, a guide that was emailed earlier this week, as well as on our website about how you can you can uh, dance this beautiful dance between worshiping with us online right now, as well as some incredible and, and powerful uh, practices to do in our homes. Tomorrow night at 6 p.m., we will have our virtual uh, Monday Thursday service beginning, but then an encouragement for you to continue that service in your individual homes or to partner with other households and continue it uh, virtually uh, via any platform such as Zoom. Uh, bulletins for all the services will be available online no later than today uh, or potentially tomorrow morning at the latest, but you will need the guide and the bulletins. Uh, beyond that, um, wonderful opportunities uh, for education, uh, specifically as in children's education currently. Uh, look for our children's homily as well as our Sunday school lessons. We will be looking into how we can provide opportunities for adult formation uh, in the weeks to come virtually. Um, but check out the web website for uh, information to worship, uh, information to be educated, as well as opportunities to serve. Uh, we are, specifically right now, we're asking people to give to support uh, frontline workers in, in hospitals, either directly to hospitals or through providing meals uh, to those workers, uh, thus also supporting local businesses. Look at the web website for more details. Uh, again, I look forward to worshiping with you tomorrow. Blessings, peace, and grace to you this, this holy week. See you soon. Bye.